All right, family. So I was scrolling through my YouTube comments and someone made a comment about how they are used to being compared to others. And I wanted to come here and address that today. So stay tuned. All right, family, welcome back. So before I go ahead and get started, let me just address this wonderful shirt. You guys know that I'm always talking about creating happy, healthy, romantic relationships. And just like some of the natural hair t-shirts that you have seen, the same woman has made this particular shirt. She is specializes in natural natural hair t-shirts, excuse me, but she will specially make or special order whatever it is that you want. A lot of you guys have asked me about my shirts and so I wanted to make sure that I put that out there. I will be putting the link to her Etsy store in the description box below. So go ahead and contact her if you would like to have one of your own shirts personalized specifically to YouTube. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and jump into the video of the day. So comparing yourself to others is something that you should not do at all. I have five reasons why. Of course, I'm going to share them here. The very first one is because it is a losing game. You are playing yourself <laughs> when you are comparing yourself, no matter what you are comparing yourself to, whether it's they have a live YouTube channel or, you know, she's light, I'm dark, or, you know, she got a better man, I got a horrible man, or she got a better job, I got a horrible job, or she got a better car, I got a better... The list can go on and on. But specifically to your person, when you are comparing yourself to somebody else, whether it's the hair, the skin color, the breast size, the butt size, the, the hip size, the waist size, everything, you are going to be in a losing game because there is always going to be somebody out there that has a better figure, that has quote unquote good hair, that has, you know, more flawless skin, or, you know, somebody might really love your complexion and they hate theirs because... They they're getting tired of being called light-skinned or red bone or whatever title you want to insert there. So it is a losing game when you are comparing yourself to others in any aspect, especially your physical aspect. It's a losing game. There's always going to be somebody out there that's more perfect in some way. At least that you perceive it. Because that's all it is. You are on the outside looking in their life and it's how you are perceiving them. They themselves might feel like they are not as perfect as you think that they are. It's a losing game. The second thing that I want you to understand is that you have to have the courage to know that you are enough. Exactly where you are. Exactly where you stand. The body that you are in. The, the skin that you are in, the hair that you have, you have to know that you are enough. You enough, sis. You enough, bruh. You are enough exactly the way that you are. And don't let nobody tell you any different. Don't let nobody put those thoughts into your mind that you are not good enough. That if you would change this about you, then they would like you. Don't let nobody continuously put those negative thoughts into your mind because they are doing nothing but corroding your mind. Anytime you start to have those negative thoughts in an instant, switch those thoughts because you are enough. Doesn't matter what you were told growing up. You enough. Say that mantra if that's what you need to do. Look yourself in the mirror and say, guess what? I'm enough. I am enough just the way that I am. If there's something that you don't like about yourself, then you change it because you want to change it. Not because somebody else was putting those negative thoughts into your head and now you started to believe them. Nah, nah, that ain't what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. You are enough. The third thing where you are going to lose in this comparison game is living somebody else's life. What do I mean by that? Okay, so here we go. You got all of these things out here. Because we live in this world where we're supposed to be perfect. We're looking at the magazines. They're showing us all these perfect bodies. 
We're not paying attention to or even thinking about the fact that most of those bodies are airbrushed. Most of their flaws are airbrushed off. And now you hear it more and more with celebrities, celebrities getting more and more pissed off about the fact that all of that airbrushing doesn't even look like them any longer. So think, just think about that. Your body is enough the way that it is. You are enough the way that you are. You can't live anybody else's life. You have to continuously stand in your truth. Live your life the way that you want to live your life. Not go out there because you seen that she had a six pack. Now, now you got to get a six pack. Because she's a very vegetarian, now you got to be a vegetarian. Man, she did that liquid diet, and man, now she she's straight, man. Everything that works for one person is not going to work for you all the time. Different bodies, different metabolism, different, 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 because you are made by God. Everybody is made by God. And because of that, we're all different. Did you guys know that every fingerprint is different? Every fingerprint is different. You don't have the same fingerprint as anybody else. You different on purpose. He ain't make no mistakes. God ain't make no mistakes making you. Your mind is your mind. Your body is your body. Your skin is your skin. Your hair is your hair. All of that's you. Everything about you makes up you. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Live the life that you need to live. It's your life. What they say, YOLO, you only live once. We do. It's your life. Stop comparing yourself to other people because you're always going to be sad because you are never going to meet those expectations that you set out for yourself. Nobody else put that on you. You put that on yourself. The fourth thing, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe. I keep talking about the mindset. You have to believe that you're enough. If you don't believe it right now, tell yourself every single solitary day. I believe in myself. You working on a goal, but you don't know how to get there. I believe in myself. Start working on that goal. You know, it doesn't matter what the goal is. I mean, a lot of people always use weight, and I'm no different. I use weight a lot, right? But if weight is not your thing, maybe your goal is to get a particular vehicle. Believe in yourself that you can do it. Figure out a way to do it and start working toward it. You want that bigger house. Figure out a way to do it. Go talk to some people. Get your credit together. Do it because you want to do it. Don't do it because you're comparing yourself. Oh, she brought this house. Like I had a, I had a friend of me. Actually, stop talking to this person. Side note. I had a friend of me. She was always comparing herself to me. And I always thought it was crazy because she had more than me. Like, at the time, I was driving my beat-up car. I love that car. Like, y'all have no idea how long I drove this car. Like, I drove this car for 13 years. Of course, it was paid off and all this other stuff. But because I had it so long, it had some dings and stuff. Ding, it had some dings and bruises on it, right? <laughs> I had that car for 13 years. I lived in a tiny old apartment. I lived in a one bedroom at the time. At one point, I lived in a studio. Like, she had her own business. She had her own house. She had her own car. Like, she had all of this stuff, like newer car, I mean. So, she had all of these things, per se, going for herself over me, at least. That's the way that I seen it, because I was on the outside looking in, right? But she was always comparing herself to me. Like, I remember this one time, I finally was able to, because when she met me, so, so let me just back up. When she met me, I had just left my ex-husband so literally i was started from the bottom what drake say started from the bottom now we here hey started from the bottom now anywho i'm just saying i was at like she caught me at the bottom and uh i had to work my way up so long story short i worked my way up i saved my money i worked my plan just like i'm telling you i'm working my plan save my money up i still kept my bummy car because i wanted to live in a better neighborhood because the neighborhood i was living in was it was a no-go <laughs> it was a no-go so the car the car was able to get me from point a to b it's, it wasn't breaking down or anything like that so i was just like you know what the outside i don't care about the outside it still get me from point a to b and i was able to keep my coins because it was paid off anywho so i moved into a better neighborhood and um 
She never even helped me move. So now, now that's a sign too. When 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 you going through, you know who your friends are because your friends are there to help you move. If all of those people walk away from you when you are at your lowest point or you need some help moving, those are not your friends. You need to cut them off. But that's a sad note. All right. <laughs> so I moved into my new place and it's in this better neighborhood. It's actually got all of these amenities and tennis courts and running tracks and pool and workout rooms. So I Yes, I got me a garage and all that stuff for my bummy car. I sure did. <laughs> so I'm I'm balling, right? But she still had more than me. Mine was uh, it was still an apartment. It was still a one bedroom. It was just a lot bigger. It had more amenities, as I already mentioned. So it was a really nice neighborhood. It was nice and quiet at night. I ain't have to wear listen to any hill, right? So when she finally did make it over there, about two weeks later. My place is all set up now. Now, what she didn't know is in the course of me working my plan, I had put uh, I put in some layaways. I hadn't done layaway in forever, but I put some layaways in or I was just buying pieces here and there. Just like I, I'm an Amazon person, y'all know. So I would go on Amazon and put all of this stuff on my wish list. And then I was just checking it off. You know, what, what I could buy at the time, give me five or six things at a time or two or three, depending on how much it costs. Let's keep it all the way real, right? And then I was ordering all this stuff because I, I was moving. Like, when I say I was moving, I wasn't comparing myself. I got to do what I got to do for me. So, I still couldn't see how she was comparing herself to me because on the outside looking in, she still had more than me, right? So, anywho, I moved in, set up my place, got all my new stuff because I ain't bring none of my old stuff except my car. I had to bring that. Anywho. <laughs> so, moved in. She finally came to see my place. It's all set up. And now, she get to see, nah, now she get to see how I really live. Because she met me at the bottom. I had to climb out of that hole. And uh, she came over. She, mm, mm, mm. She's making all these noises and stuff. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, mm, mm, mm. Bedroom big. I'm talking about they gave me a massive bedroom. I'm like, yes. No more tiny room. Right? Just walk in closet with all my stuff. Boom, boom, boom. Right? <laughs> I had a huge bathroom. Like, the place was lit. So she looking around. We were supposed to go out and do something this particular day. And we finally did make it outside the house. But before we left, this is what she said. Ooh, I got to go home and paint. What you got to go home and paint for? Like, what's up? Like, no, no, she ain't, she ain't never brought up painting. Not, th not this soon. She ain't brought up painting, right? I'm like, oh, what you going home and paint for? What's up? Girl, we just left your place. Really? Like, anything that I talked about doing... She really had to one-up me, too. So, okay, so when I finally did mention that I was going to purchase a car, which I never did at the time. I never did. Anyway, when I when I was there and I'm talking about I need to purchase this car, I told her the type of car that I wanted. Now, all of a sudden, she's in the market to get her a car. And not only was it a car, it was a better car than mine. As in, she was always trying to one-up me. So she had the house. And literally when I say she talked about painting, I brought that up a moment ago. She literally did go home and paint. And maybe not that night, but the but the next time I went over there, she had furniture moved out and she she really did paint. Anywho, that story was too long, but I'm just saying, for real, stop comparing yourself to people. Because you always going to lose. I don't, I don't have time to compare myself to you. I don't need to. That's number one. I'm like super secure in who I am as a person and what I am bringing to the table. So I don't need to compare myself to you. I don't have to. I did that before, but I, I was always on the losing end of the stick, which is why I know that you, my brother, you, my sister, is always going to be on the losing end of the stick. Been there, done that. The last thing, the very last thing, so you can win, so you don't have to compare yourself to anybody is to surround yourself with those who are going to inspire you those who are going to encourage you those who are going to make sure that your life and your self-esteem is fed into those are the people that you need to surround yourself with those people who are speaking life into you that is how you are going to win that is how you are going to get over this whole comparison thing because you don't have to compare yourself to nobody else. You are an individual because that's who you are supposed to be. You're not supposed to be any of those other people.
You're not supposed to have the body like anybody else. You're not supposed to have the hair like anybody else. Now, I'm not even knocking weed, but I have to bring this up. I think that this is another reason why we have this a thought process that we have to go out and buy hair. You don't have to. I remember I remember I was talking to this one sister and she told me because I got natural hair. Most of y'all know she told me that uh, <laughs> because my hair was of a certain texture, I could wear my natural hair, but she couldn't because hers was more coarse. Again, it's just perceived. It's the way she perceived it because I'm on the outside looking in on her hair. I think that my hair being more coarse, hers was a lot fuller or thicker, as we say, than mine. I'm thinking, I wish I had that coarse hair. It's all thick and pretty. But because she was teased as a child about her hair, she never let that go. And so she always covers it up. Always. It's in its natural state, but nobody ever sees it because she always has on, on, on uh, a weave or a wig. Nobody ever sees her hair. Actually, I haven't even seen her hair in years. In years. Because society has told us that we have ugly hair. Let me get to the, to the black people on this one. Sorry, everybody else, but this is for the black people right here. Society has told us that our hair sucks. We got this old, nasty, ugly hair. It's the only hair that grows in coils, which is why we are able to get the afros, because it grows in coils and circles or whatever. Everybody else's hair, for the most part, grows in, grows in straight lines, or it has a little wave to it. Ours grow in coils. It breaks off a lot faster. So because society has told us that we have this ugly hair, we have started to believe it, and now we want all of us want the straight hair. I've even heard some of my sisters say that they cannot wear their natural hair. They don't look good with their natural hair. But as I mentioned before, God ain't make no mistakes. He ain't make no mistakes. You have the hair that you're supposed to have. Anywho, I'm going off on a tangent. I'm just saying, I'm not knocking you if you're wearing weave. I know that's not the way or the reason why everybody wearing, is wearing weave. I know that, and I know that other ethnicities wear weave, so don't start bashing me. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop comparing yourself to other races. Do you. If you've been wanting to wear your hair, wear your hair. The only way you're going to get used to your hair is if you embrace what God has given you and you start rocking that. I was one of the first people in my family to rock my natural hair. For the longest time, they weren't even on board. They're like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? But I'm an individual. I wanted to do it because that's what I wanted to do. And now, guess what? I was the inspiration. Years later, now all of my sisters have natural hair, and, and including my mother. My mother was the main one, like, no, nah, don't do that, don't do that, no, 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 no. Now she has natural hair. It took some time, though. I'm just saying. Be an individual. Stop comparing yourself. Do what you need to do. Love yourself completely. Believe in yourself. Know that you are enough. And that way you will continuously win. You will stop losing at the game of comparing yourself to anybody else. All right. I love y'all. Definitely give me thumbs up and subscribe if this is your very first time here. I will see you in another video. Deuces.